whatever gets assigned to this. So I'll just close others. <laughs> All those extra files it created. Okay, so now this should render for us uh, that first component. And the text that we expect to render, we expect a div to be rendered with my component. I've forgotten to put the music back on. <laughs> just let me know if it's soft enough. Okay, so we expect div my component to be added in. If we head along here, we're importing my component from my dash components. Ah, I'm going to put that off. We're importing my component from. There's a close others option. Yeah, <laughs> Atom. Hey, Atom's great. We import a component from this reference, and this reference exists down here, and it references that source file. We don't have to append .js on the end because we've got uh, this default JS extensions on. And these files here, examples React React, examples React React DOM, are these files within here. We kind of don't need this add-ons thing, so I'll delete it. Actually, well. Yeah, I'll leave it. It's fine. I'll delete it. Okay. Now this is this is System JS. It's up here, and System JS lets the import stuff work. We've got a transpiler here, Babel, which means that it will pick up that ES6 code and convert it to an ES5 compatible version um, to run in a browser. And these just map out our components. So when we say import from my components, it's going to do a file lookup to the correct JavaScript file. So you'll just have to adjust this as you go along. This import kicks off the very first script import, which loads import.js. Now this should be in a runnable state. Uh, what I'll do is use the serve command, which installs with, you can install it with npm. Just go npm install serve, and it creates like a reusable server. And that'll be at 127.0.0.1.3000. We go into examples, my component. That's pretty cool. It's rendered it out. Okay, it's given it a special React ID. This is part of how React does event listeners and um, diffing of the DOM. Now, the one thing I want to move is that I want to move this stuff up into head because I'm using document body as a location for that stuff and it's wiping out the script that was in body. Let's just check that that still works. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, stuff in the trash bin just really irritates me. <laughs> okay, now we've got now we've got an environment where we can do live code testing. We don't need to compile these components down to ES5 manually or have a watcher script. We just write ES6 code. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool, I think. So that's the first step. I'm just going to create a Git repository for this so I can start uploading or checking it in at least. GitHub. Just want to put it on the other screen, make sure I don't accidentally dox myself. Okay, uh, what shall we call this? React starter? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Gave me an error and then it made it anyway. Okay. The repo, I'll put the link in chat in case you're at all interested in following along there. The repo is there. Hi, Karen. Now, we've got that repo up there. Uh, what I want to do is just commit this first batch of stuff so that I don't lose it. Uh, get remote add origin. <laughs> so what do we have here? Uh, we need to remember to ignore node modules because you don't want that stuff in, uh, uploaded to GitHub. Node modules. That looks right. Oops. Initial <laughs> spelling here. Spelling out the window. 
git push upstream. So that should put the stuff up here now. Dun 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 dun! Come on then! <laughs> oh, thanks for the star! There we go. Okay, so now we can keep on adding stuff to this. The next thing I want to look at is adding tests. Um, because that's kind of a useful thing to scaffold, then people don't have to do their own scaffolding stuff with it. And I thought, since we're using React from Facebook, we might as well use Jest from Facebook. So, I've forgotten exactly how I set this up, but it can't actually be that difficult. Do, 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 do. I remember you do an npm install. <laughs> Getting started. Yes, there you go. Just CLI. Okay. So, well, okay, fine. And uh, we also need to add the script. So, Jest is a unit test framework that is made by Facebook. Apparently, it works very well in combination with uh, React or just generally JavaScript that comes out the Facebook stable. Um, I've used it a little bit, and one thing that's very interesting with it is that it assumes that everything should be a mock. So it doesn't actually let code through unless you specifically tell it to let code through. And um, so one of the things we're going to have to allow through is the React stuff. Now I'm going to just head over to the uh, the module where I first installed this because I've got that um, that code exception already specified in there. This is some code we've been working on at work um, to refactor the like to redo the asset stuff in Silverstrap, but in uh, in using React like a lot of the time. I'll explain these properties now. I just want to, oh, formatting sucks. Okay. So uh, we probably also need to install Babel Jest then. Yes. Okay. Save dev. Uh, okay, so Babel Jest is a transpiler, just like we have a transpiler for uh, System JS to get the live ES6 code compiled to ES5. We need a transpiler for Jest to be able to get the live ES6 code transpiled to ES5. So, uh, we include that, and npm install will get that installed for us. Though curiously, <laughs> though curiously it didn't actually add the entry, because I saved over it. I'll just put this in here, why not? Jest TLI, Babel Jest, that's fine. Um, so we allow the transpiler through. Uh, we also can set the test directory name. By default, Jest expects a directory called underscore, underscore, test, underscore, underscore, and that's rubbish. Well, maybe not for them, it is for me. So, uh, yeah, I removed that. Also, um, what we want to do is we want to target the, well, well, we want to install uh, React through npm as well. npm install save dev react because I think what Jest is going to do is it's going to avoid the whole system JS thing that we've set up it's just going to yeah uh, it's just going to um, import those modules and try and compile a thing try and build a thing so we probably want to install react so that Jest can find that so this looks okay we're not actually using this for our live demos but that doesn't really matter um, then we've got this bail true thing. Jest by default will go through all the tests, even if there are failures, and it will like gather a summary of all the failures or all the passes. But we're the way that we're going to use this is through Travis. So we don't care that much to get a full error report. We just care to know whether it fails at all or not, and then it can be run locally as sort of a debugging step. The frankly, the less time Travis spends building this stuff 
the quicker we can know uh, whether things pass or fail. And we also set up like a test thing here, so we can do npm run test, which is I think the default command for Travis to run. Let's try this out, run test. Yeah, that seems pretty good. But it's not going to find anything. It may just wait there forever or something. I don't know. I don't actually know what it'll do in the, in the event it doesn't find the test. Then uh, we also add It'll, so Kieran asks, does Babel check for supported browsers? Um, if you do Babel Live, I have no idea. If you do compiling, it'll always compile to ES5 because it's going to assume it's, it's supposed to work on the lowest common browser possible. So it'll always compile down to ES5 if you put it through something like Gulp or Grunt or Webpack. But uh, but I'm not sure about the live version. Maybe maybe the polyfills are applied dynamically, or maybe they're just assumed. I don't know. Actually, it makes sense that they could be applied dynamically. Anyway, we've got an test in here, so I'm just going to copy the format of that because I know that it works, and then we'll check again. Um, ingest. <laughs> ingest. That's hilarious. Come on then. So uh, we'll call this my-component-test because consistency and put the stuff in here. Whoa! Let's close that up. Now this needs to reference stuff in the source. So because it's in the root, I think we just need to go one up. What's in the root of tests? Just need to go one up and then my component. Now we do this because remember I said jest mocks everything by default. If we don't have this in, whatever functions we call in it are just going to say a function not defined, which is kind of not what we want. So I'll call this my component test. I think that's it. I can't exactly remember the assertions, the assertion code, but maybe we can look here. Dun, 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 dun. There's mocking. Okay, expect to equal. Okay, expect type of my component to equal <laughs> my component. Maybe that will work. Here we use require. We're not using import statements in this because just supports. Require JS format module in, uh, importing. I don't know if it supports ES6 module importing. I would expect not. So, what does it do now? Does it work? Is it good? Da da da. <laughs> the wait, the tension. No, it's not doing it. Um. Simulator Greg asks, what testing library do I usually use for JS? I don't do enough JS to have a good answer for that. I've used tape quite extensively before. Um, I've done acceptance testing through stuff like Ghost. What's that Ghost thing's actual name? Ghost, Ghost Inspector. Ghost Inspector. I've done end-to-end -end testing with Ghost Inspector. I've done end-to-end -end testing with Behat before. I've not done anything more advanced than unit testing in JavaScript, and I've done very little um, asynchronous-based unit testing or acceptance testing in JavaScript. So this this is kind of like Behat, but as a software as a service thing, that's a pretty cool service. It's kind of expensive if you use it in a production environment, but to play around with, it's pretty cool. Like you record behaviors which equate to the same as writing a Behat test, and you can get it to run when a pull request comes in or when Travis runs or whatever. It's pretty rad. It also does image uh, it also does image diffing and video diffing, which is pretty great. Like if you want to test animations, you can do it with Ghost Inspector. It's crazy. It's pretty cool. So uh, this isn't working, much to my surprise. Um, 